Hi, and welcome to Lesson 1 of the Tailoring Thesis Like a Pro tutorial series. My name is Rick Anderson, and I'll be your instructor throughout the entire series. The goal of this tutorial series is to show you how to take advantage of the tremendous customization opportunities that Thesis affords. These lessons assume that you have no coding experience, and they are designed to guide you step by step throughout the process. In this first lesson, you'll learn about customizing the default CSS of Thesis. This lesson assumes you have a working website running using Thesis and that you've established FTP access to that site. If you're not perfectly comfortable with FTP, please watch the Lesson 4 videos of my Start Building Your Website Here video series. It goes through my recommended system of file structure organization and FTP. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. This lesson has three parts. In the first part of this lesson, we'll prepare our site for customization. In the second part, we'll look at the Thesis CSS file structure. And finally, in the third part, we'll take a look at some best practices through examples of simple customization of the CSS. Now, I've created a demonstration site located at www.banner2.byobwebsite.com. This is a basic installation of Thesis 1.6 with um, very minor modifications made. We just added a couple of pages and some headings. Let's go ahead and scroll down here to the bottom and select WordPress Admin and log into our dashboard. Once in our dashboard, let's scroll down here and take a look at Thesis Options. Now, The first thing you notice is this little attention box. It says in order to take advantage of all the controls that Thesis offers, you need to change the name of your custom sample folder to custom. And this is something that we're going to be doing in just a moment. If you go down a little further to the custom file editor there at the bottom, you can see that when you click on that, that same attention box shows up. Now in the future, once we have taken care of this custom sample folder, you'll actually be able to edit your custom files your custom PHP file and your custom CSS file directly from this. Now I strongly advise against that and we'll talk about that in a little while. But anyway, I just wanted to see what this looks like. Now in order for us to be able to resolve this, we have to change the name of this folder in our hosting account. So let's go ahead and open up another window. This website is hosted at Bluehost, so we'll go ahead and log in. And now here that you're at your control panel, just scroll down to File Manager. And if you don't have a Bluehost account, all hosting accounts have some feature of a file manager. Select the File Manager. In the public HTML folder, go down to the installation folder that, that your website is in. In my case, it's under this subdomain called Banner2. Open up WP Content open up themes, open up thesis 16 and under thesis 16 you can see that there's this custom hyphen sample folder we need to just get rid of that hyphen and the sample so select that, select the rename just scratch out sample I don't understand why this does that but we, when it asks for us to delete we're going to say cancel and then we'll say rename the files. And now you can see that your custom hyphen sample was renamed to custom. If you want to see whether or not that worked, you go ahead and switch back over to the thesis options here. Go down to thesis options. And you can see now that that attention box is gone. If we go down to the custom file editor, which is also where you saw it, now this whole thing shows up and it says you're currently editing custom CSS. Let's add a custom, let's just look at editing custom functions PHP. Select edit selected file and note this is the reason why I strongly suggest that you do not do your editing here. Because it says, note, if you make a mistake in your code while modifying a PHP file, saving this page may result in your site becoming unusable. 
prior to editing such files, be sure to have access to the file via FTP or other means so you can correct the error. So if you're going to need to have an FTP version of this file in any case, it just makes sense to me to edit the file on your local machine, upload it here, test it, and if it causes a problem, then you can just edit it again on your local machine and upload it again. So if we're going to do it my way, we need to open up our FTP client. I use FileZilla, and if you've watched other video tutorials, this will be familiar to you. The reason why I love FileZilla is because it allows you to synchronize a local file structure with your domains file structure. So we'll go ahead and log in. Connect up. So you can see that I've got this local file structure called Banner 2 BYOB website. Under WordPress, I've got WP content. You can see the what's under WP content here. Well, that perfectly corresponds with what I have over here in the remote site, which is I have my public HTML, and then I've got the Banner 2 subdomain, and under that, there's this WP content. So if I select down here to themes and thesis 1.6 you can see that here I've changed it to custom and here I have it as custom sample because I didn't change it on my local machine so let's just go ahead and download the custom folder to this so now we've downloaded this custom the renamed custom folder and all of its contents which is not really very much, mind you, but nevertheless, all of its contents to our local machine. We've left our custom sample alone. That gives us uh, the ability, if we have to restore back to an original file, we can just take it out of custom sample and bring it here. So if we look at the contents of custom and custom, they are identical here. Okay, and that wraps up part one of lesson one of the Tailoring Thesis Like a Pro tutorial series. In part two of this lesson, we'll look at the Thesis CSS file structures.